Hey, what's going on everybody? Matt here. In this video, I decided to talk about diffuse hair loss and three main types of diffuse hair loss, starting with the very short term one until the most permanent one. How you can spot uh, any of these, what are the symptoms or signs and how to correct them. Okay, so let's start. This video has been brought to you by GoFiber. Enter your pictures and win a one year supply of GoFiber. It's easy to enter. Order a free sample, take a clear before and after pictures and send them to selfie at gofiber.com. Hey, welcome back everybody, Matt here. You're watching my hair loss and hair transplant related channel, which is all about me providing you with reliable and scientifically backed information on topics like hair loss management and hair transplants. So if you are new, make sure you subscribe and also visit my website, mattdominance.com, where you can not only get my free ebook, five things I wished I had known before my hair transplant, but also you can apply for a consultation with me where I basically gonna explain you all you need to know before your hair transplant, provide you thorough assistance during your hair transplant research and thus saving you hundreds and hundreds of time researching online because I'm gonna also provide you with reliable hair transplant doctor recommendations, doctors you have to contact and then we're gonna evaluate their quotes. I'm gonna provide you second opinion and avoid unskilled doctors and unlicensed technicians that are also uh, unfortunately doing hair transplants nowadays. All right guys, now let's come back to the topic of diffuse hair loss which I decided to cover pretty extensively in this video and that's why I also prepared some slides for you to make it much more easier to follow and much more understandable. Uh, before I mention to you all of these three types of diffuse hair loss, uh, I want to make a big distinction between um, diffuse hair loss as such and uh, hair shedding. Okay, Hair shedding, it's a normal thing that happens by every human. Uh, everybody sheds about 50 to 100 hairs a day. That is no hair loss, it's just the normal shedding that happens, you know. There is always some hair on your scalp that is in the anagen phase, the growing phase, in the telogen and resting phase, okay? Uh, so it's normal and that happens. However, if you experience some diffuse hair loss on top of that, it means that you are not only shedding these 50 to 100 hairs per day, but on top of that, on top of that, you are also shedding some more hairs which are um, uh, being shed as a result of you experiencing some underlying hair loss condition, okay? So that's important to know. Now let's take a closer look at uh, each of these three types of diffuse hair loss, how they differ from each other and what are the things that are causing them. So the first type of diffuse hair loss, it's a very short term type of hair loss, which is uh, self-correcting. Uh, it doesn't need any intervention whatsoever from your side, any treatments whatsoever, it's going to self-correct. It's just, it comes as a result of you experiencing a shock. And I'm going to come um, to that in a minute, what that shock will be. But this shock will kind of pass your hair follicles from prematurely from the uh, anagen growing phase to the telogen resting phase. The resting phase lasts about two to three months and that's why also the hair loss is only going to last for two to three months, not longer. And after that, it's going to reverse naturally without you having to do anything. Now, what this shock can be? Well, this shock can be something like a pregnancy for a woman uh, going through crash dieting. You know, you maybe you used to have a good diet balance in carbs, proteins and fats. And now you uh, start yourself out of glucose completely. You are on a ketogenic diet and you've been doing it for one, two months. You will notice that from the first day you started this ketogenic diet, uh, fast forward two, three months and you will experience, you may experience some really massive shedding which you have never experienced before. And that's exactly that shock that can cause this telogen effluvium, the premature kind of transition of the hair follicle from the telogen to from the anagen to telogen phase. It's reversible, you don't have to do anything, uh, don't freak out, it's just a natural replacement uh, of the old hair with the new hair without any thickness loss, okay? There is no DHT, there is no miniaturization going on unless you have some underlying androgenic alopecia condition. In such case, uh, you may experience even more shedding because if you have some shedding which is uh, induced by androgenic alopecia and some additional shedding which is induced by this 
additional stress uh, like pregnancy or uh, like crash dieting or uh, having fevers things like that you may experience even more shedding of course but assuming you are healthy you don't uh, you are not androgenic alopecia or male pattern hair loss or female pattern hair loss um, uh, patient uh, you can still experience this type of short-term hair loss even if uh, DHT is not affecting your hair follicles uh, or if your hair follicles are not DHT sensitive better said so again this is the type of hair loss which is very short term it's reversible unfortunately i see many people online going through that hair loss and kind of misusing that uh, for selling you different uh, treatments like natural remedies that don't work but people fall for it because they see somebody experiencing massive shed then he's gonna tell you that uh, he's using some special uh, serum and the hair regrew back of course somebody who doesn't know about hair loss is gonna believe him but in reality it was just this uh, self-correcting hair loss that this person experienced and he claimed that hey the product helped me with the regrowth when in reality it's just self-correcting telogen effluvium okay so be aware of that all right guys the second type of diffuse hair loss uh, is being oftentimes referred to as a chronic telogen effluvium and it's chronic because it lasts longer than three months and it's not uh, self-correcting uh, you need to intervene you need to do something to stop that hair loss you need to uh, address either an underlying medical or nutritional uh, condition uh, which is uh, like the cause for this um, chronic telogen effluvium and again it occurs more by women than by by men and also the diagnosis of um, of the cause of the chronic telogen effluvium can be more tricky because the causes uh, can be plenty it can be something like zinc deficiency uh, iron deficiency or even better said ferritin low ferritin levels which is the storage of iron in your body it can be malabsorption it can be a low protein diet it can be fatty acid deficiency talking about your hormones like for example your thy thyroid it can be a constant under activity or over activity of your thyroid which could be causing this uh, chronic telogen effluvium and making it like very long, uh, longer than six or even nine months, unless you address this thyroid issue first. It could be also the uh, over or under production of glucocorticoids by your adrenal glands that could be also contributing to chronic telogen effluvium and also anemia. Basically, your body's white blood cells attacking the hair follicle in the bulge area and making making it pass prematurely uh, from the antigen into the telogen phase, okay? Causes for this uh, chronic telogen effluvium are so many and it could be hard to really kind of pinpoint the, the, the cause, number one, that it's really responsible for it. But it's very easy, on the other hand, to differentiate it from either the self-correcting uh, telogen effluvium, which corrects itself. Uh, so if you experience telogen effluvium for more than six months, it's more like it's chronic telogen effluvium. It's not the self-correcting hair loss. And it's also easy to differentiate it from uh, androgenetic alopecia, which can also be expressed as diffuse hair loss on top. Uh, because even with androgenetic alopecia, if you experience diffuse hair loss uh, for the first time, usually you, you, know, you don't notice that out of the sudden. Usually if, you, if you're experiencing androgenic alopecia and the result is diffuse thinning on top, this diffuse thinning is not going to be obvious to you unless you have already lost like 25 to 50 percent of the hair uh, what i want to say with that is that it's pretty easy to differentiate it from other types of hair loss and thus you can um, better you know target it and correct it all right now let's talk about the third type of diffuse thinning which is usually a result of a uh, male or a female experiencing androgenetic alopecia, male or female pattern hair loss. As a male, you start noticing that on your mid scalp or crown where your hair is diffusely thinning, but maybe you have also, like your temples have also already receded, your hairline has receded as well. And uh, on top of that, you experience some diffuse thinning. That's exactly the thing. By women, it's uh, usually, it starts being obvious after menopause as this Ludwig pattern where their top 
of the the actually the whole mid-scalp and crown starts diffusely thinning and this is usually uh, how you can see it now the big difference between this type of diffuse thinning which is more permanent and these two first ones is that here with every hair cycle the hair that falls out and then grows back it grows back and it's thinner as the previous hair which is not the case with the first type of uh, diffuse uh, thinnings like chronic telogen effluvium or telogen effluvium which is self-correcting because by these types of telogen effluviums the hair grows back after it has shed in the same thickness as it was before it's healthy as it was before whereas with the most like the permanent diffuse thinning induced by genetic side and mediated by androgens as DA, like for example DHT it's also miniaturizing the new hair the, the new hair uh, has been miniaturized and it grows back of course but it's thinner so that's the difference now it's not very easy to spot this permanent diffuse thinning for the first time because for the first time the, the hair loss that you get here is not as sudden and not as drastic as it is the case with um, the telogen effluvium or chronic telogen effluvium which kind of happens as a shock and this shock usually is responsible for much more initial hair loss compared to uh, the permanent diffuse thinning the permanent diffuse hair loss is in a way also self-correcting because even if you don't get on finasteride even if you don't uh, use minoxidil the hair will grow back of course but it's going to be thinner so oftentimes if you don't do anything to prevent that or if you don't even know that you have androgenetic alopecia to begin with uh, it may happen that there are going to be several hair cycles that are going to pass and are going to pass your hair diffusely thinning hair will keep diffusing and it's going to keep growing again thinner and thinner and maybe after several cycles after the hair kind of thinned out like 25 to 50 percent you start noticing like wow I think I'm diffusely thinning but in reality it has been going on for years okay so that's the big difference between this type of permanent diffuse thinning and these first two types like telogen effluvium and chronic telogen effluvium which happen like more like out of the sudden and the initial shed is really obvious and noticeable on your scalp uh, as a really like a patchy spot so that's the big difference between here and here now again as i said the cause of this permanent diffuse thinning uh, is uh, androgenetic alopecia okay there is a genetic factor which you have to like inherit from your parents and uh, normal levels of androgens which are mediating this condition and making it worse progressively uh, mainly it's DHT dihydrotestosterone but also testosterone and androgens in general so what are the things that you can do to prevent that the ideal thing is like spot this type of hair loss as soon as possible and, and start treating this hair loss as soon as possible if you are a man we have two FDA approved medications for this condition uh, which is finasteride one milligram oral tablet and minoxidil 5% topical solution if you are a woman uh, you can use 2% um, uh, topical minoxidil that's the only FDA approved medication for women experiencing androgenetic alopecia or female pattern hair loss uh, which can be of course uh, also diffuse hair loss <clears throat> now if you have the type 1 diffuse thinning it doesn't mean that you cannot have the third type as well so for example if you are suffering from androgenetic alopecia you are experiencing some diffuse hair loss which have been going on for five or six years maybe you noticed that like yesterday uh, it can also happen that in the future you get you you put your body through some stress or shock and you get this massive shed via telogen effluvium and that means that you can in fact experience both uh, types of diffuse hair loss at the same time or uh, you may get like uh, nutritional deficiencies and start experiencing chronic telogen effluvium on top of your androgenetic alopecia I hope you know uh, uh, what I meant with that uh, by ma males and females so it's not just limited to males or whatever okay so it's important to know about these different types of diffuse uh, thinning and and accordingly accordingly address them uh, if you want I can do like another video which would maybe um, 
focus more on uh, one or the other type of diffuse hair loss and uh, you know offer you some uh, concrete solutions and more go more in depth on topics like uh, solutions for chronic telogen effluvium or uh, solutions for a diffuse uh, type of hair loss or any other type of hair loss. So I think also the third type of diffuse hair loss is uh, the type that most of the guys watching my channel have. It's usually the diffuse thinning which is induced by androgens and genetic factor. Uh, but I think it was important uh, to make the whole distinction between the different types of diffuse uh, thinning because there are many people who can experience different types at the same time. Also, if you are healthy, you have no genetic predisposition to male pattern hair loss or female pattern hair loss, you can still have uh, like uh, chronic telogen effluvium, for example. So it's important to not to freak out and just uh, get to the root of the problem as fast as possible and treat it accordingly. All right, guys, that was it from me for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. For all you new guys, again, uh, make sure you visit mattdominance.com if you want to get my free ebook, Five Things I Wished I Had Known Before My Hair Transplant. And for all you guys who are already seriously considering hair transplant, feel free to visit mattdominance.com slash mentoring and apply for a one-on-one -on -one, uh, hair transplant strategy session with me where I'm going to basically share with you all you need to know before your hair transplant, provide you reliable hair transplant doctor recommendations and help you make a more informed decision in order to avoid getting a bad hair transplant result. Okay. So that was it from me for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and I'm going to see you in another video. Take care.